but we want to one more time recognize all of the sponsors, starting with our TEA global partners, Chimalong Group, Christy, and please hold your applause, and then we'll do an incredible applause at the end of all of these. And Pat, if you would join me up here, that would be great. The Hedema Group, Sea World Parks and Entertainment, Universal Creative, Walt Disney Imagineering, and I have your list and right I've here. And I've got TEA Global Sponsors. We just changed the order, as you can tell, or else I'd already be up here. <clears throat> Plan B. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, it could have been A. TEA Global Sponsors, Seventh Sense, A-N-E-S, Adirondack, A-E-S, Aquatic Design and Engineering, Chicago Scenic Studios, Cortina Productions, Coming, Electrosonic, Falcons Creative Group, HBG Design, JRA, Craftwork, Mad Systems, Mediamation, Mousetrap, Oceaneering, PCL Construction, Sally Corporation, Stantec, Finkwell, and Wartzilla. We also have our corporate sponsors, AECOM, TEA AECOM Theme Index Partner, Burkett Engineering, Canyon Creative, Color Reflections, Numotive Production and VoiceOver, GoGo Brothers, I actually want to meet GoGo Brothers, so just out of curiosity, Good Theory Studios, and Nolan Hyman LLP, VCI Event Technology, and Visual Terrain. Now, this is just a reset, and we are ready to do a shout out to our volunteer TEA Next Gen crew. Go ahead and give a shout out, Pat. Shout! Evelyn Askew, Matthew Brookman, Diane Bookwalder, Lance Carty, Kenya Collins, Casey Eichen, Andrew O'Rourke, Shay Willard, and now here's something. Well, let's just hold that. We have to applaud for oh. all of these amazing Sorry. sponsors. Applaud. Thank you so very, very much. Now, before we move in, as the next presentation group comes to the stage, is my group here somewhere? Christian. Jameson's, Christian. if we could get them to the stage. May we have every sponsor that we mentioned today, please stand up so we can truly recognize your contribution to the themed entertainment association and the summit. Everyone, please stand. That's a, thank you, thank you. Woo! We thought we were doing the Curie huh? we we next, not the Jameson. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, we Thank up. you so much. No. Now, I think my Jameson group is going to wind their way to the stage, but we also have some lifetime award recipients in the audience that were not here earlier this morning. May I have all of our lifetime award recipients, the Buzz Prize award recipients, please stand. I know Jeremy is still here. Jeremy Railton, if you would please stand. Keith James is here. I know Ron Mitziker is in the back. We have Monty Lundy back there. And at this moment, thank you again, gentlemen. <laughs> All right. We also, while we're waiting for the distillery people and Christian, we have our past presidents in the audience that were not recognized earlier. I know Keith James was, but Keith, please stand. I know Christina is in the audience. I see, thanks, Steve Burkett is still here. Please stand. And I know David is here, who's not past, but he's present. Please stand up. We'll hear from you after lunch. Do I have, oh, Pat Gallegos in the back. Keith and Monty Lundy. Everyone, please turn to Monty Lundy in the back because he just got engaged on Valentine's Day. He, woo! <laughs> and Monty, we love you because if it wasn't for you, 550 people would not be in this room today. We would not have started the Themed Entertainment Association without your guidance and your vision. So again, a big thank you to you, Monty. A huge round of applause for our founder, Monty Lundy. Now, I see them coming. I see Christian. I see John. All right, then I'm ready to go.
Let me start the introduction then, please. Thank you. Now, right before lunch, to whet your appetite, it is becoming a tradition to do something like this at lunch. So the AOA for brand experience goes to a shrine <laughs> revered the world over. And I know yeah, it's table, eh? a shrine that I've often partook in because, as they know, my early career is where I ran 100 nightclubs. So you were always part of my world. So it's the Jameson Distillery, Bow Street in Dublin, Ireland. The Jameson Distillery, Distril, Distillery occupies the same building where John Jameson founded his original distillery in 1780. The fully guided tour runs approximately 40 minutes, taking guests on a... I'm going to turn the page on a multi-sensory, interactive, story-driven experience on any of six unique pathways. I don't know about you, but my favorite parts of this experience are the 90, in fact, I had friends just do this, John, then they lasted more than 90 minutes, <laughs> the 90-minute hands-on mixology course, Whiskey Shakers, and Whiskey Tasters, where you blend your own to take home. Please welcome Project Director John Carroll and our good friend from BRC Imagination Arts, Christian Lachelle, Executive Creator and Director and Vice President. There you are, gentlemen. We're here. We had a... We got confused because I thought there was supposed to be another group, but here's it the was. good news. We're the only thing standing between lunch, and I know everybody's hungry, so we are going to wet your appetite, hopefully maybe a shot at lunch, and if not, definitely for the mixer. So anyway, we're going to jump right into it because we all want to move. Uh, we love this Raymond Chandler quote, which is sort of one of the things that became a, a, an epic piece for our uh, uh, project. A good story cannot be devised, it has to be distilled. And a wise man he was, Christian. Yeah. Um, I suppose a, a mixture of storytelling and whiskey making, it's a, a match made in heaven. We're in business, Christian, and as you mentioned yeah. right before lunchtime. Um, first and foremost, just want to say absolutely honoured and privileged to be here amongst you guys today. Some of the talent, some of the experiences on, on show, on showcase, is absolutely humbling. So we're, we're thrilled. We're thrilled to be able to share with you our story of Jemison Distillery Bow Street. We've just come through uh, an 11 million euro refurbishment. We're back open one year. Um, and we're thrilled to be able to share our story via this next half an hour or so. Um, and it's a story that started with that man, John Jemison, uh, who moved over from Scotland with his wife Margaret way back in 1780, almost 240 years ago now, to set up his distillery in Smithfield in the, in the heart of Dublin. Quick show of hands, anybody who's paid us a visit. So we've got a few. All right. Hopefully we'll see a lot more of you over the, the next while. It was a really ballsy move by John and Margaret at the time. At the time, Dublin was experiencing a boom. There were dozens of distilleries and breweries open and operating all over the city of Dublin. Um, as well, Dublin was the second economic epicentre or hub within the UK and Ireland, only behind, uh, behind England. So it was a, behind London in, in England, I should say, sorry. Um, and it was, a, it was a very, very ballsy move. But the philosophy behind that crest of arms that you see help them strive to success. Sine metu is the Jemison family motto, and translated from Latin, it means without fear. So it's having the courage to act on your passions, and it's something we can all live by today. And it stood the test of time. Jemison as a brand has survived world wars, prohibitions, trade tariffs, recessions, it's also been a mindset that's also um, enabled us to innovate, innovate new products, innovate new experiences, new ways of thinking, and break new ground into new markets all over the world. Today, Jemison is enjoyed in over 130 markets. 70 or more of those are enjoying either double or triple digit growth. We've had 28 consecutive years of growth. We're the number one Irish whiskey within the category. The category of Irish whiskey is the fastest growing premium spirit. Um, we're selling over six million cases uh, year on year. Um, despite all of the growth, all of the success over the past good number of years, we've been very much grounded in a, in a place of uh, home. Um, and our brand home for us is absolutely at the heart of everything we do. We moved, so any, any drop of Jemison that you enjoy this weekend at the Thea Awards, or 
when you go home, responsibly, <laughs> of course, uh, comes lunch. from our distillery in Middleton. So we moved production down to Middleton in the south of Ireland in County Cork in the early 1970s. Fast forward then to 1997, as more and more people interacted with the brand all over the world, as I mentioned, over 130 countries, they want to come, they want to make that pilgrimage, and they want to learn about the story, about the history, about the production process, um, and they flock to see where it all began, and walk, as we say, in the footsteps of John Jemison. And we threw open our doors in 1997. We opened a visitor experience, a visitor center, and then it was called the Old Jemison Distillery. Very quickly, we were up to about 150,000 visitors per annum. Fast forward another 10 years, we gave ourselves a little bit of a facelift in 2007. At that time, we were hitting about a quarter of a million visitors every single year. Prior to our closure in the fall of uh, 2016, we were over the 300,000 mark, um, doing really, really well. So I'm kind of painting a little bit of a rosy picture in terms of the performance of the brand globally. The brand home, the numbers, very strong, turning a great profit. Why, why, why invest? Why put 11 million euros into our, our brand home if you're doing fine and everything is tickety-boo? Well, they say a picture paints a thousand words, a video is going to do an even better job. So here's a quick overview of, of why. This is the house that John built. Bow Street, the most celebrated address in Irish whiskey. A Dublin institution since 1780 and a centerpiece of Smithfield. At its peak, the distillery spanned five acres and was truly a city within a city. Today, visitors are given a glimpse into our past, walking where John walked and standing on the very foundations of our history, or more technically, our washbacks. They learn what makes Jemison, well, Jemison, and for decades, the feedback has been good. But good isn't a word that sits well with us. We know there's room to build a better experience and to create a brand home that takes us from good to great. Jemison fans flock from all over the world to see where it all began and we need to create a uniquely Jemison experience that more than justifies their journey. So we're building a place where the spirit of Jemison can be further brought to life where our craft legacy pulls up a pub stool with Dublin's emerging craft makers. Thanks to our whiskey, taste has never been in doubt. But now the other senses are brought into a more immersive experience, a fearless step forward to breed new life into Smithfield and lead the whiskey revolution. Innovative, creative and bold, finding new ways for our story to jump off the page. We can't just be a mark on a tourist map. This is a pilgrimage for an army of advocates who live, breathe and love our brand. Great is within our grasp and its home is Bow Street. So there you go. Thank you very much. And um, we're incredibly proud. And it, not that there was anything wrong with the, the old experience. It just had become a little bit tired. Stuffed cats and mannequins just weren't cutting mustard anymore. Um, <laughs> I mentioned we first opened doors, uh, our doors as a visitor experience 21 years ago in 1997. Another decade later, 2007, we refurbished, and then 10 years again. So it's cyclical. And usually, depending on the nature and scale and size of your brand home, that cycle is usually anywhere between five and, and 10 years, Christian. So we were yeah. kind of at the upper end. Yeah. People were interacting with the brand through brand events, uh, in the entree, et cetera, et cetera. And we were very uh, quickly and, and flexibly able to update uh, the positioning of the brand through brand experience almost on an annual basis from a marketing perspective. But 10 years is too much of a gap, so when people were enjoying Jemison glass in hand through events or in bars, and they were making that pilgrimage, coming to see us, they had a heightened expectation that the experience they would get in the home of the brand would be up here. And if we're really honest, it wasn't. Yeah. Um, we were at cap capacity, so during peak times, as I mentioned, we were up to 305,000 people, but at peak times, we were packed. And there'd be queues of people out onto Bow Street, and with social media, 
people immediately were getting onto their social channels and they were complaining and it just wasn't great, it wasn't a comfortable experience. And then the last point was we weren't fit for operation. With that number, it was becoming uncomfortable for our visitors and it was becoming uncomfortable for our staff alike. So, yeah, and we know that three and four millennials would rather pay for an experience than a product. We're seeing this globally as sort of a trend in, in the brand home spaces that we work in and obviously you're seeing it both you know, people are having an experience at events, but they want to have that same experience when they come to the brand home. They want to come see where John Jameson really set this up. So it was really critical for us to change that. And this space is continuing to grow. It's a trend that we're working on things globally right now. In fact, we're working again with Pinot Ricard on a, on a brand new project that will open for Absolute later this year. So. And also, when we look at experiences, you know, we really focus on, you know, the consumer, you know, more likely to consider the brands that deliver better experiences. We know that. Uh, more likely to recommend brands based on their positive experience. Willing to pay more, which is really incredible for, for brands in terms of product and sales. If they understand the story, if, they, if they've had the taste, if they understand that knowledge, they're willing to pay more. And they're more likely, most important, is building advocacy, is bring, building brand loyalty and cementing that in the heart of, of the consumer. Absolutely, and up to about you know, five years ago, we weren't really giving any credence whatsoever to this whole area of brand love and brand advocacy. Um, a lot of our KPIs around success and our objectives were on footfall and revenue. Um, and as I say, the whole focus on brand experience and you know, consumer centricity was very much secondary or tertiary. So in the last four years or so, we've kind of moved the dial, less of a focus on, on bottom line and more on brand experience. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not that we're saying park the bottom line and the financials, that it's not important, it absolutely is important. We're an extremely profitable business. Absolutely. But also, we are focusing very much on delivering the ultimate brand experience. And we kind of have this philosophy that if, if you deliver the ultimate brand experience, the dollars, the euros will look after themselves and they'll flow in. Ultimately, all laddering up to this whole notion of building advocacy, you know, loyal brand fans who will stay with your brand uh, forever and recruit more people into the brand. And if you take, uh, if you look at, I suppose, other elements within your marketing mix, Brand Homes is extremely powerful. There's probably no other element of the mix that can compete. On average, people spend about two hours uh, with us. And if you, if you like, if you look at TV, shoppers, social media and events, your Brand Home, if you have one, effectively is the canvas to be able to showcase all of those other elements within the mix. So, about three years ago, four, maybe four, um, we devised a vision for our brand homes to create the ultimate Jemison brand home experience, fueling brand love and an advocate community to lead this whiskey revolution we speak about. Making Jemison Distillery Bow Street a must-see destination uh, and a place of pilgrimage for our advocates set right in the heart of Dublin. So how do we, we make it happen? So we had all that lovely two paragraphs on a PowerPoint presentation. How could we make it a practical reality? And we needed to find our A-team, our A-team which would help us make that vision become a practical reality. Um, and after a very, very rigorous uh, and competitive tender process and interview process, we found our A-team. And they're actually based in California, these guys, BRC Imagination Arts, who had an amazing portfolio body of work, had an amazing team of people, absolutely did an amazing interview, your creds all stacked up, everything was great. And I remember sitting in at the time on the interview yeah. process and we had our scorecards and we had all the usual things and actually one of the, the things at the very bottom we had was, do we see ourselves as a team enjoying a, a night out having a bottle of Jemison with these guys? Yeah. And <laughs> we just got that sense with the team at BRC. We've had a lot uh, lately. <laughs> and we have, responsibly. Um, <laughs> down, <laughs> down, down through the years, uh, the, the couple of years that we've been working together and, you know, we're, we've remained great friends. Yeah. Um, you're, you're now introduced into the Perna Ricard family, the Including guys that are working. Including Pip out there. Well, I'll come to him in a minute. Oh, okay, I'll come okay. to him in all a right, minute. Right. So, and we're talking about this whole area of brand love, you know, there it is right there. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh. So this guy, this guy uh, is an incredible, he's a wizard of a man and all the team at BRC um, were, were extremely, extremely grateful. But we were on a, a tight window, um, we were on a tight budget, uh, we had a tight program to make, 
um, and we really had to get you in under the skin and yeah. learn the DNA of our brand. Absolutely. So the way that we, we get going on this, and you know, John and the team uh, at IDL, Irish Distillers, just really put, you know, opened up all the doors for us. So we did an incredible immersion. I mean, so really tough work. We started off with a whiskey academy, so we had to go to school for whiskey, learn how it was made, work with all the people down there, which was a great immersion. I mean, you really, you know, from the mat, you know, from the head distiller to the to head cooper, we got to really get the, the look and feel and sort of the taste and, and the entire process. But also, what you're looking for as a storyteller is where are the story's gonna come from. This is a 200-year-old brand, and we have this amazing person up in that upper right-hand corner, Carol Quinn. And Carol is the archivist for Irish Distillers. And when she just opened up her archive and started to lay out these books, and you know, pulls out a notebook from John Jameson II, 180 years old, it still has notes, his distilling notes. I mean, you think about all these modern craft brands. This is really the people, you know, when you get a good recipe, you don't need to change it. But they were working day and night. And actually, right out of these books, the barley grains were falling out. 200-year-old barley grains coming straight out of these books. So we had an incredible wealth of stories. In addition to that, uh, we went really into the planning phase, finding the right stories to tell, spending time, once again, with, with Philip and Carmel, who are also here today, some of the members of the TEA. You know, we worked with Visual Train on, on, on lighting. And we really got stuck in on planning you know, we had a selected entire team. And we looked for, you know, for us, it was really important, and for Jameson, to have pretty much a 100% Irish delivery. Yep. So, there were, uh, so we had to find the right partners. We went through a process of selecting the architects, writing all the RFQs and RFPs. And we sat down and we got to work right away, just trying to figure out how are we gonna get this thing done? Because we'll talk about scheduling in a little bit. It was very, very tight. But it was a very hand-in-glove process. We, we worked basically night and day. Yeah, to and get I think as well on that, just for anybody who is approaching a project, a similar project like this, onboarding with all of your teams and not just your, your, your key members of your team is incredibly important. And I can remember about a month before we closed, we actually, once we'd appointed all of our subcontractors, we must have had about 100 people from about 20 different companies yeah. in. And we had a little auditorium in the old Jemison Distillery, it was called at the time. And we gave each and every one of the subcontractors, about two minutes each, to take to the floor and, and, and tell their story so that we could all understand. It was going to become a very hectic business, a building site, I should say, very, very soon. But we actually wanted to connect. We wanted to share what our North Star was, our vision. We wanted to share the renders. Because we knew, and we'll come to it when we talk about program in a few minutes, the shit was going to hit the fan. We knew we were, when we were in the trenches, we absolutely needed everyone to give their 120% A game. And, and they actually did, and it, 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 it stood to us, I think, in the long run. Yep. And then really, looking at the space, you know, one of the things we looked at in the design, and you, we had this in, in one of the objectives, was we had a, about a 55,000 to 60,000 square foot space. We were kind of maxed out, I mean, at the current uh, tour, we were maxed out, but we wanted to find ways in which we could not, you know, we could sort of grow that capacity, take people from not only, you know, 350,000, but already, you know, like on the top end, 500, almost a half a million. So we had to really kind of rethink the entire space. What kind of experiences were you going to create? Not just one size fits all, but a whole series of different experiences all under one roof. An experiential platform that could change and evolve with the brand, not something that was static. And so, we were, yeah, we yeah. were hearing back from our, I guess, our strategic target that they craved experiences. They wanted to roll up their sleeves. They wanted to immerse themselves. They wanted to gain knowledge. Um, and they also wanted to have fun, ultimately. And our old experience was a catch-all, one-size-fits-all. So we needed to create other layers of experiences for that audience, and then also for repeat visitors who'd come back that it wasn't just, well, you did that experience. I'm sorry, that's all we've got for you again this year. So we, we closed on the last day of August in 2016. That's myself and our managing director, Claire Tolan, uh, closing the doors on the old Jemison Distillery after a, a serious party we had inside. Yeah. The, the strip out crews were in at eight o'clock the next morning to start pulling stuff out. We were nowhere to be seen. We were gone. <laughs> we left them at it for a week. Yeah. And then fast yeah. forward uh, six months, we were, we were closed for six months. Right. And just to give you a sense of some of the challenges, um, we were closed for six months. You know, it was really important that we would 
uh, closed down at the end of summer, so we wouldn't lose that revenue, and that we would be open in time for the second Christmas, which is St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. So, so you know, we had, and that's great. But here's here's a couple of challenges. We're in a historic building, so we have to deal with all the heritage. We have to completely demo. I mean, the whole, every single space in there wasn't going to work. In fact, we were moving operations, we were moving everything. So we had to gut it. And on top of that, we realized that all of the actual mechanical systems were end of life. So we had to put in an all new mechanical space in this six months. And we had to do this with residents right above us. We have, we have a whole, we're actually in a mixed use development. Yeah. So some of our show spaces are, less than two feet from the bottom of somebody's chair in their, in their kitchen. So, the so we had to do all of that in six months and train yep. the entire staff. So hard hat training. But and we, the distillery <laughs> is also located on one side of us. We've got a, a juvenile court. On the other <laughs> side, we've got a, a, a hostel, which has a 90% occupancy rate seven days a week. Yeah. So yeah, it was great. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good neighbors, uh, right? Uh, no, no complaints, uh, yeah, no complaints, yeah, right? Yeah. And we had to figure out how we're going to get a liquor license in that time too. And <laughs> when we appointed our architect and our builder, they initially came back and they said, looked at your plans, it's 12 months. And we you like, said? No. <laughs> and then they came back and they said, it's nine months. And we said, no. no. <laughs> so we literally had six months to do it. And yeah. to be fair, they did it. Um, we reopened on the first day of March. Uh, last year, just in time for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, we, we actually then had two half days where we had to close. There was stuff going on that we were just trying to finesse. But in, in, in terms of for all of our bonuses and stuff, we opened uh, on the first yeah. of March. So <laughs> even if it was for three hours, it was OK. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> and we reopened with five core experiences. So we're gone from one experience to five. We've got craft experiences. We've got, do you know what? I'll play a video. Yeah. Greetings from Bow Street. I'm thrilled to be able to give you a quick sneak peek around our new look at Jemison Distillery. Come on with me. So our flagship Bow Street experience begins here with our story. Next, our guests get a fun and immersive overview of our production process from grain to glass. One of the main reasons why people flock from all over the world to visit Bow Street, taste, that's why. On The Whiskey Makers, guests learn by tasting. It's a deep dive into our production process, and you even get to blend your own whiskey as a keepsake of your time here at Bow Street. Welcome to The Whiskey Shakers Experience, our fully hosted cocktail masterclass. We're here at our live maturation warehouse in Bow Street, the only one of its kind in Dublin, where you get to draw and taste whiskey straight from a barrel. So if you haven't been to Bow Street, we'd love to see you. And if you already have paid us a visit, please do come back. As you can see, we've got a, a host of other experiences for you to enjoy. Slauncha. So that's us. Who's yet? 11, 11 million euro they spent, and they couldn't just stretch another $2,000 to get a decent presenter. I'll and tell uh, you, man, I'll tell you. We try, we try, you sick. know. Casting call, anyway. Uh, but really, part of, the, part of the charm and what I think people are really responding to is, you know, it's storytelling, but it's also very participatory. Uh, we have a lot of places where, you know, if, you know, for example, in that map room, guests can actually take down different objects from the collection, and, and the story changes. So it's not, it, it, every single piece has been built to sort of have stories embedded, and that it's, it's not just something that's told to you but something that you actually get to experience and participate in. And that's the big thing is two-way conversations, not just one way. The other thing is we know that 70% of consumers, if they have a tactile experience, a sensory experience, they're more likely to stick with that brand. 
And so we use a lot of different sensory uh, elements. These are some of the sensing tables that we have in our process that you go through and you know everything from grain to smelling the different aromas with the different types of uh, uh, cast that we use, but also like we even developed an entire sorbet, like a, yeah. a sherry sorbet, yeah. and, a, and we worked with chefs on on special chocolates. So we did a lot of things to just really enhance and bring out the flavors and the senses. And I just always remember something sticks in my mind on the project on that particular our process. Uh, Paul Carthy, who's the managing director of the Guinness Storehouse, who are fantastic friends of ours, literally a mile across the River Liffey in Dublin. We gave the, him and his management team a quick sneak peek about three weeks beforehand, and he was standing in at one of those tables, and he was like, this is absolutely amazing. The fact that you guys can give every single person who comes through your door such an immersive, hands-on experience is just incredible. The guys are doing an amazing job. They're at 1.8 million people through their doors. But I think we're at a scale of 350,000 now where we're able to actually do that kind of hands-on uh, personal touch with their ingredients. Yeah, absolutely. And really, it's, it's about knowledge and education. We're seeing, again, consumers want to know where their brands come from. What do they stand for? What's the difference in, in product? And especially in the whiskey category, there's so, you know, Jameson's a great brand to kind of jump into, but there's so many places you can go. So, you know, with the various experiences you, you saw, we can dial that up. If, you, if you're coming in already a Jameson fan, we can dial it up to a whole new level of different expressions and, and great sort of spirits that you can, you can try and learn about. And as a, as a brand, we say we're serious in the making, but not in the telling. So our space is inherently social. Um, it's not unusual to see groups of friends in there having a great time enjoying coffee. In fact, uh, the whole design was based around JJ's Bar. I mean, we, we centered the bar as the, as the place that, you know, you're going to come, not only are you going to come into it, but as you go out, it's a sense of uh, bonding and connecting yep. and sort of connecting it's the, it's the beating heart of Bow yeah. Street, we say. Yeah. And yeah. then our brand ambassadors, I mean, they are the frontline soldiers, if you like, and we invest so much in our teams um, to ensure that they're able to deliver the ultimate brand experience every single day of the week. We're open seven days a week. Um, and if you actually look on our, our, our TripAdvisor, it's the one key thread all the way through is, is the people. Our unique selling point is we're fully hosted. From start to finish, you'll have a knowledgeable brand ambassador with you from start to finish, and we're incredibly proud of all the team. And the level of training and investment with BRC and our training teams on the, the, the closed months, yeah, we, w we just spent so much time. Once again, I Ireland is a great storytelling culture. And so you have this amazing, you know, staff and, and, and team that can really deliver these stories. But you have to work at it every single day. In fact, we were at South By talking about this last week, which is you can't let those standards go. You know, a bad brand experience really can happen through the guests. And if this is your only time that you're ever coming to see, you know, Jameson in Dublin, it has to be beyond great. Absolutely. It's got to be just exceptional yeah. on hospitality. Absolutely. So we work really hard, keep those standards high. So I showed at the start the amount of millions of uh, people who are enjoying the brand uh, day in, day out, week in, week out. Only 350,000 of those people actually get to come and visit. So it's really, really important for us that we're able to amplify the experience beyond the four walls of the distillery. So digital and social play an absolutely huge part of our marketing strategy. Um, and the reaction since we're back open, as I say, we're a year open now, has been fantastic. Um, we've seen a 300% increase in uh, user-generated content uh, since our reopening. Yeah. Trending really well, you know, in terms of all of our reviews, we're, we're scoring quite high. And we don't take it for granted. Yep. Um, we work very hard to ensure that we keep that exceptional uh, level of, of delivery. Um, and we've won a, a few nice awards along the way as well. Um, and I suppose the cherry on top is, is the, the Thea um, for its standing achievement in brand experience category. And we're oh, we absolutely you. honored and thrilled to be here uh, to share that with you. And I just want to say on behalf of everyone at Jemison, a massive thank you to the team at, at BRC. Uh, Philip Edelman is sitting here. Philip actually moved his, his life, his wife and his child over to live in Smithfield in Dublin for a, a year along with Alex from BRC as well. Christian, you were over every month. Yeah. It was, um, it was an incredible journey. And we, we, the, the core project team, we actually called it the Bow Street Bubble. It was, uh, it was an incredible uh, opportunity. So I hope to see you over the, the next couple of days. If you do have any questions, we'll see you outside for lunch. Well, yep. You can do a couple questions. Can we do right? Brilliant. Okay, we can do okay. okay, great. Fantastic. Thank we you. Got, thank you.
So do we have anybody who wants to know anything about the secret history of Irish whiskey? We will be around, so yeah. come on, somebody there. Uh, I got one way back there. It, the, the microphone's coming to you. Stand up. Excellent presentation. Uh, Brad Jashinsky, Digital Marketing Manager for Knott's Berry Farm. I wanted to learn a little bit more about uh, so if you can give us some examples of how you encourage visitors to share and continue that conversation on social media. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, I, we're not seeing a, a, a revolt to digital in any way. I'm not going to say that. But you definitely see people when they come in, they're taking their snaps and then they're putting their phones away. And then probably later when they go back down to JJ's bar, they're editing and then they're posting. Um, we actively encourage people to, to, to take video, to take photographs. It's built into the scripts. Yep. Uh, we'd have printed prompts as well throughout the building as well. Um, and then we've actually got a number of um, photo opportunities, and not even opportunities, they're more like kind of installations throughout the building as well. Like we've got Jemison chandeliers, uh, we've got back bar displays, we've got a wall of old blending bottles, very historical. Um, and we're kind of seeing there's probably five or six or seven the kind of main places or items that get snapped all yeah, the way. Yeah, the chandeliers are a big, a big hit. You know, yeah. everybody wants them, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think it needs to be done in kind of a subtle way. Um, I think you can, over, over, overkill that kind of very uh, direct call to action to to share on social. I think I think it needs to be done, and from our brand's perspective, in a very kind of an under undertoned manner. Another question. Sure. I got here right in the there. center. Hold on, I'm coming to you. Got really quiet. Everyone's hungry. <laughs> Hi, Becky with uh, Zeitgeist. Um, two things. One, are you tasting at lunch? <laughs> no? Uh, no, but maybe we'll, we'll go find a spot. Yeah. yeah. Um, but two, just out of curiosity, if I'm traveling with children, how do you guys manage um, 21 and under? Well, you've got to be over 18 in Ireland is the, the legal drinking age. Um, we welcome everybody to Jemison Distillery Bow Street. And on um, that go. note... We're going to welcome everybody to ask more questions. Come on, I'm Roberta. So sorry. <laughs> we are out of time. I am so sorry. I'll talk to we you. need to get all of you to lunch. Be back Thank at you. 155. Right. You, You've been a Thank great you. audience. Have fun at lunch. Okay. Well done. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Is it, which one's your